Welcome to Behind the Story with me, Pearl Tusi, the real Black Pearl Mama Panther. And today, I must tell you, I am extremely excited for the person I'm interviewing today. A huge inspiration to me as I was coming up in the industry. I'll tell you all about that as we go on. And a woman who has done many, many great things in her life. Ladies and gentlemen, she doesn't really need an introduction, but you know what? This is Miss Dinevo Ranaka. Yes. Hey. Looking so beautiful. Beautiful. I could say the same about you. So happy, so fresh, so radiant. The sun's <laughs> shining on us. Yes. Good day. You flourish in radio. It's like, I guess it's like, and I, I mustn't make this about me. It's like my relationship with modeling. It got me here, but it it was a step. It wasn't the whole staircase yeah. for me. So I understand it in that way, but it gave you so much. And then there was there was YFM, there was 5FM, there was 947, and then you were just like, actually, no, this is not what life yeah. is about. Why drop the ball like that? Like a child would sometimes rebel against the things that their parents advised them to do. I had a conflicted relationship with God at the time. Mm -hmm. I felt like if God was my parent, I would sit him down and say, but why are you trying to live your life vicariously through me mm. when all I want to do is be an entrepreneur? Radio never afforded me the time to learn how to do what I want to do. And radio frustrated me. My relationship with YFM was a very hard one. It was a very painful one. Why? Just the structure of YFM is as immature as that station sounds sometimes. Honestly speaking. Okay. I respect the people in it. I respect what it stands for and what it's about. I respect the value it has added into my life, but I also acknowledge and will never forget the damage they caused me as a Are person. Are the politics childish? Yes, very okay. immature, very petty, and I can't, I can't exist in that capacity. Okay. And then with Heifel Stereo, there was another blessing, right? But then I felt every snoop session I had with my boss, I'm expected to be what I'm not, and I am ungovernable. Mm. Yeah. We joke and we say you're the female fat Joe. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes. This is a private joke with some people. <laughs> like, how's the female fat Joe doing today? <laughs> to a degree, I'm ungovernable. And I think my stability in radio now has a lot to do with my settled relationship with God. I'm no longer conflicted with God. So I remove myself from the structure that I was so frustrated by and focus so much on the external conflict when I should have sooner addressed the internal conflict. Is it like that whole be the change you want to see in the Absolutely. world type thing? Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Control that which you can control and that is you. I had to tap out for my sanity, for my health, for my own dignity and for my pride because I internalize energy so much that it damages me. Mm. I drink the poison that I expect others to drink. Yeah. You understand? I, I completely understand so you. So it was, it was very conflicted, and that's why I pulled the plug on radio. You're making me reflect a lot of my own radio career and how a lot of things are perceived when you do them. So when you, when you left the last radio show that you did and the station, the, the perception about you and radio, it, it almost looks like there's an instability with the person. It makes it look like you're very volatile or you're breaking down or you just don't have control over what's happening. Well, that's, How did that make you? That's societal script. Yeah. Society expects you to be a certain way and to just take abuse and take it. And I don't settle for abuse. So for me, three months or four months with Highfeld Stereo, however many years from 2006 till when I left with YFM, two and a half months on Touch Central, you can look at that and say, she's unstable, she's volatile. You don't own me. Mm. You didn't place me. Mm. I don't see myself as volatile. I don't see myself as unstable. I see myself as very sound-minded and very in tune with my emotions and very, very clear on my vision for self. If it's not working, it's not working. I'm not married to you. It is a relationship bound by a contract. Every contract has an exit clause. I will find one. <laughs> and, but when they call it breakdowns, babe, do you feel like you had breakdowns no, on no, air? No, I broke down on air. Really? Yes, yes, yes. No, that wasn't a rumor. I broke down on air. I came back from the J&B Met. I was hurt, deeply humiliated at that weekend of that Durban July, that particular one. Prior to being diagnosed with temporal lobe epilepsy, I'd suffered a very intense seizure. I didn't know what was happening with me, and I was all over the show because emotionally, my body could not 
take the stress and I caved. And when I came back on air, I came back into a volatile relationship at YFM. I came back with calls from journalists. I came back, I came back to, oh my gosh, I came back to so much overwhelming negative energy. I will always be human first before I am forced to be made a machine. I've got such an intimate relationship with my radio fans. I trusted them with my tears. I trusted them with my vulnerability and I cried. And for me, that was an excellent radio moment. I cried on air. Breakdown? Well, I call, what it, you must. <laughs> I call it crying on air. Was that the only moment that you had? Yeah, yeah. That was the only moment that I had. I'm usually, look, I'm, I'm, I'm usually strong enough and I usually allow God to be very strong for me and on my behalf. However, sometimes I like, hey man, it's a bit much. It's a <laughs> lot, mate. It's a lot. Can I cry now? It's a lot. <laughs> I need to yeah. let this out. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. cool. No, I yeah. completely understand that. Do you completely maybe assign that to what you were diagnosed with? Or is it just the emotional moments that you have on air that you choose to have? Because, I mean, there'll be rumors and you as an industry folk. Oh yeah, even in that moment, I was, I was, I, was, I had, I made headlines for, for using drugs and dealing drugs for yeah. like four weeks con <coughs> consecutively. And I was like, oh my God, I know people that do drugs. <laughs> They've never done drugs with me. They can tell you that. <laughs> and. Look, Pearl, when you learn about an illness in you, a medical condition that you have, it puts a lot of things into perspective. Are you taking medication? No, I'm not. Really? And I refuse to. Why? I'm gonna sit forward for this one. <laughs> Here's why I don't take my medication. I personally believe that the human body is so magical, it can heal itself. Mm -hmm strongly so and I will get slaughtered for even saying this but I can prove it because I tried it on me and it works and I'm saying don't try this at home but if you believe that you've got the the mind power that I have and you can change and reverse conditions in your system by being honest and responsible enough about your life the way you think, what you consume, even from an energy perspective, you can heal yourself. My temporal lobe epilepsy is not a problem. My hypothyroidism is not a problem. I'm not overweight like a typical hypothyroidic patient. I am not m extremely moody and on antidepressants like a person with temporal lobe epilepsy. I don't, I'm not in that capacity. Purely because every day I take sunlight as my medicine. Mm. I take pearls of happiness as my medicine. Okay. I take prayer as my medicine. I recondition myself on a daily basis. I refuse to be dependent on anything that is man-made. So you are not you are not applying the whole black culture attitude against medical and mental conditions, right? Mm -hmm. You're just mm -hmm. saying I'm trying to treat it differently, but I'm yeah. not saying it doesn't exist. I'm not saying that we shouldn't yeah, yeah. address it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I think sometimes we need to give the mind credit. I'm not saying don't take your meds, but I'm saying get your mind right and you'll realize how much potential of healing ability you have organically in you, mm. how much potential for success you have organically in you, how much potential for happiness you have organically in you. Get your mind right. Be cognizant of the thoughts you think. They inspire the words you speak and that inspires the outcomes of who you will become. And that's just me. Okay. That's just me.